migration crisis in Greece. The situation is most acute on the island of Lesbos, where last month around 160,000 migrants landed, most of them fleeing the conflict in Syria. And as winter approaches, the numbers continue to grow. Right, around, right now, around 7,000 people a day are reaching that island, and the UN expects the total October to exceed 200,000. The challenge faced by the authorities clearly is immense, and as our correspondent Ian Panel reports, the system for registering and relocating the migrants is facing collapse. If you thought this crisis was easing, look again. As one young man from Syria abandons a boat whose engines fail, and makes a last gasp effort to reach safety, Europe, and dry land. For the last two days, an endless stream of dinghies. Thousands are pouring onto the shores of this small Greek island. Exhausted, hungry, and relieved. The world's attention may have waned, but the pressure and the pain has not. <laughs> thousands and thousands of people have landed. Seems to be a sudden rush of people. That's partly because the weather's changing and so the seas will rise and the opportunity to reach dry land and Europe is starting to close. For some, it's not the reception they expected. People need documents to let them leave this island. But as their numbers swell, many are queuing for days here. Most are Syrian. But Iraqis and Afghans here say they're also refugees, fleeing war. The demand is overwhelming as Greece and the UN struggle to cope. Astonishingly, this fight erupted over a bottle of water. Without enough food, shelter or help, this risks tipping out of control. At the moment, the arrivals are even higher than in uh, September. In September, this small island received 160,000 people. And in the last day, we have had an average of 7,000, which would mean to receive, if the trend continues, 210,000 people on a small island who has 80,000 inhabitants. That's overwhelming. It is. It is overwhelming for everyone. Overwhelming, yes, and undignified. Najma's frail and sick. Her medicine was lost at sea. Now she slumps outside a registration center with her grandson and family begging to be allowed in. My baby is very sick. Okay. So the lady is... Uh, She's very tired. They've also been waiting for days to get their papers. And they're tired, exhausted and angry. Abdul Aziz criticizes the police and the UN. He says it's as if they don't exist. They're just full of empty words. And as day passes tonight, this crisis seems to just grow, as the authorities look close to losing control. Another fight breaks out in a queue to get registered. The trained UN staff have pulled back, replaced by volunteers unable to deal with the crowd. You have to go! go you have to go! Please go! Terrified Afghan women cower from those who are supposed to help them. Right, right, These are images they don't want you to see. Please, please move the camera for one minute. As they try to force us to stop filming. What's hope then for those who come here seeking refuge? Ian Panel, BBC News, Lesbos. Well, two boats carrying almost 150 migrants have come ashore at an RAF base on Cyprus. It's thought to be the first time since this current crisis began that people have landed directly on British sovereign territory. Our correspondent, Yolant Nell, reports now from that base at Akrotiri. Tired and dishevelled, new migrants are now a familiar sight on the shores of southern Europe. But not here in Cyprus, and not on British sovereign territory. Little children were among 114 people who arrived on two boats at RAF Atiri this morning. They were helped by military personnel. All are said to be in good health. They say they escaped from war-torn Syria. There's bombing everywhere. People are uh, shooting each other in the streets for, for no reasons. And they describe unscrupulous human traffickers on a dangerous journey. They told us we, uh, that we are going to Germany. We don't have an idea that we'll come to uh, this country. It's the most scary three days of my life. We don't uh, know if we're gonna live or we're gonna die. 
Now their next steps look uncertain. Here on the coast of Cyprus, we're not that far from Syria. It's just 60 miles across the Mediterranean. And yet this hasn't been a popular destination for refugees fleeing the civil war or migrants from other parts of the Middle East. That's because this island is relatively cut off from the rest of Europe and it's difficult to leave. It's not yet clear whether any of this group intentionally set sail for a British base hoping to claim asylum in the UK. But Britain says it has a long-standing agreement with the Cyprus authorities so that they'll take charge of such arrivals. As desperate refugees search frantically for new routes to Europe, many will be watching to see what happens here next. Yolande Nell, BBC News in southern Cyprus. But in his